Well, you know, it's been a crazy, uh, honestly, year and a half. August, a year from this past August, Pastor had his uh, had his his stroke, and you know, a year before that, he had had quadruple bypass, bounced back unbelievably. The man, I think, he was out of the pulpit three, four weeks, and just back got went to Israel. But then the stroke was kind of a game changer, and uh, and but he is such a strong leader that even from the hospital, he was encouraging us and building us up, building our faith, and uh, you know that was that that could have been a a crisis, and it was it was a crisis, but at the same time, it was as though the church rallied, just yeah. just because of the stalwart man that he is, a t- you know tough old German and. Uh, and it was amazing, but uh, suddenly we did realize, you know what, we've got to carry the weight. He and, and Pastor said, he said Moses leaned on his staff. I'm going to lean on my staff, and uh, <laughs> and so <Good>. so, <laughs> so that's what that's what we did, and and we took, you know, we we just began to to do our best to to make every worship experience the best it could be, Absolutely. and encourage our people, give them hope, and then you know, Pastor was able to get back in the pulpit. He he, he sat for a long time at a desk. But we were just thankful to have him back on the platform, and um, and then now he's back in the in the pulpit, and he's teaching on Wednesday nights. He has been for a while, uh, but then the pandemic hit, and and that that was a game changer for every yeah. church. So we're not only facing the challenges that we were already facing, but then now we're faced with uh, with church closure and and trying to do church in a whole new way, you know, and so, and if, you know, overseeing the music and creative elements of what we do that, you know, I had to roll up my sleeves and really jump in the middle of all of that, which was, yeah. you know, for such a time as this, and I believe God had every person strategically here to be a part of that. And I'm so thankful. And, you know, honestly, we, we're fine. We are seeing people come back to church now. And uh, of course, Florida is a little Looser, I think, than a lot of places, but we've got people back. We had, we had a big crowd for the Hoppers in concert Sunday night. We had all of our Christmas concerts. And uh, so we're sort tell of us getting your, back to tell us, tell us about your Christmas concert, because they are, they are a special. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, it's the Christmas Keyboard Festival, and this year was, was year 30. It was the 30th anniversary, and uh, oh Dave goodness. Thomas started that 30 years ago with Pastor Betzer. They've been in every single performance. Uh, I, I estimated... Um, oh, well, well over probably two hundred and fifty thousand people have come through the doors during the during the thirty years of we do five performances, um, hundreds and hundreds of performances that they've been in every single year. Uh, we do four grand pianos, the choir, um, usually sp- some kind of special guest. We've had voices of lead. Oil Dykes was here this year. Uh, Dino has been here. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's a big weekend for us. And this year was the 30th and it was pastors last. We knew that as pastors. So in the face of the pandemic, uh, you know, the church council said, let, you know, we're going to take our, a risk here. We don't know what the crowds will be like, but let's go ahead and do it. And, you know, we, we probably had about half the crowds that we normally do, but a ton of people watched online. Yes. And honestly, we went into this saying this year, we, we need to have church, just like we have church yes. at First Assembly. Yes, we're going to do some festive things, but we're going to worship and try our best to give people hope. And and I really feel like God helped us do that. It was it was absolutely incredible. And I, I am thankful. There comes a season in your life that, that, that with the pandemic or, or anything political or whatever, there comes a point when you've got to have a gut check and you've got to say, hold on a second, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground Absolute. is sinking sand. And it, yeah. it is the men and women of God that rise up at those moments that stand up and say, yeah. this is what we're doing in, in, when, when uh, uh, Martin Luther nailed his thesis on that church in Reims. He said, this is where I stand. And what happens yeah. is I believe in the days that come, we are going to be called upon by God in the most difficult of circumstances to say, this yes. is what I believe, this is what I stand for, and, and let, let our voices be heard. And I, I've, watched, yeah. I've watched many of your Christmas extravaganzas, and it's just, it's just <laughs> mind-blowing. I'll never forget, I was there, I spoke one time at the missions conference, and I stood at the, in the front row before we, we got up to speak, and you, it was like a it was like a kaleidoscope of the world brought into the church, <laughs> and and you 
your, your genius in creativity is that you make missions easy to understand. And most people, missions is a faraway, gaseous play thing, mystical thing that's over, you know, over there. And you yeah, managed to yeah. bring it into people's hearts. And because of that, um, First Assembly is one of the greatest mission-giving churches in America. Well, you know, we're thankful. And Pastor has been casting that vision for years and years and years. And he's relentless in it. He is relentless in yes. in the pursuit to spread the gospel to every nation, you know. And and so many people say, well, my mission field is my backyard. but And that's true. We do have to reach the world our sphere right around us. But he said to Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the yeah. world. And so we have a responsibility to reach the world. And that's, and I, I, and that I did not have quite that worldview when I came here seven years ago, but it didn't take long to get indoctrinated and, and, uh, and really catch the vision. And honestly, I, you know, pastor has a book, why some churches are blessed. That, that was his last book that he, that he's written. And, and that book has ended up in the hands. I had a friend of mine, Mark Condon, who is a songwriter. He's written tons of things. The Brooklyn Tabernacles recorded his own stuff. Wow. And he told me he, he got that book and, and applied those principles. He planted a church and he, he did a Zoom rehearsal with my choir this past summer. And he had just read that book. They caught the vision for missions. They needed a building. And you should see the building God has given them since then. And they got it completely paid for totally paid for there in Ohio. It, I mean, That's I'm amazing. talking hardwood floors, gorgeous lighting. You, I mean, it, it's just God-sized miracle. But we've seen that happen over and over and over. If we take care of what's important to God, he seems to always take care of, of, of what's important to us. That is the key. I have a dear pastor friend, Jay Stewart, in the refuge in Concord. Yeah. And he was in a, he was in a wee church, uh, and I, like a shop front. It was a shop front. It was like a a mix of buildings and we went yeah. there and shared about we, we needed windows for the orphanage in, in in Moldova and they literally emptied their missions uh, their building account the wow. what they'd saved up for for a building they gave it to <laughs> us and we were able to put the windows into the largest orphanage in in Moldova and uh, you should see the building he has now because God is God is no respecter if you if you put his heart first yeah if you bless the heart of god and i i've discovered this in my own life I, when i went to moldova 30 years ago in romania 30 years, adopted andrew my son and then watched yeah. the, um the need there our ministry exploded in in size because we literally took on the challenge of rescuing the perishing and caring for the dying exactly. and yeah. and god seems to align himself with someone that cares you know, for him, I often say yeah. many folk are, are on the side of the, the harvest field complaining and God saying, yeah. get into the harvest field and I'll take care of your needs. And um, right. you seem to have found that secret in First Assembly in a tremendous way. Tell me, how did you get started? I'm interested to know, how did you get started in this great ministry that you have it, 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 in, in your music ministry? You're not well, I, I grew up in a pastor's home in North Carolina. My dad, uh, uh, you know, I, I grew up in, in the Church of God denomination. And uh, so I, 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 my dad's been a pastor most of my life uh, from the time I was in kindergarten. And uh, so I grew up in a ministry home. And uh, when I was about three years old, uh, you know, kids would get around the piano. But my parents, all of a sudden, they said, yeah, that's not banging. He's he's playing something. <laughs> and uh and so as I, as I got a little bit older, they, they realized that gift, there was a gift there and it, and it is God given at the piano. And, uh, and so it, they began to put me in lessons Well, they put me in traditional lessons and the teacher figured out really quickly what I was doing. I'd have my mom who is a, who, who can play the piano. I would have her play the music for me and I would just listen to it one time, memorize and pretend I was reading music and I really wasn't learning to read music. And, uh, and so she caught me and figured me out. And she said, yeah, we, she said, I've done all I can do here, but I want you to go check out this guy. And so my mom drove me out or each way to piano lessons for years. And, uh, and I worked with a guy who helped me develop my ear, um, and, and be able to really play in church. It was, it was really, a um, uh, you know, God just puts the right people in your life at the right time. And that was one of those situations. He didn't, when my mom first called him, he said, I don't take students that young. And uh, she said, would you, 
we just meet us one time. And so he agreed. And then, and, and after that, he said, yeah, I'll, I'll do this. There's, I, I can wow. do something with this. And, uh, and so he took me on as a student and I studied with him until we moved away to Charlotte. And then I worked with some other instructors until I went. Um, and of course I did. So from the age of probably eight, I've been playing in church and, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, all I ever knew really. And then I, when I graduated high school, I had my plan all laid out. I grew up in a parsonage, watched the, the struggles of the ministry, the challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Money and be my own boss. And so I said, I'm going to law school and, uh, and had everything laid out. I had already paid, I had full, full ride scholarship, already had my roommate, to it, everything laid out to go to a university in North Carolina, and I went to the Church of God General Assembly and met a man named Danny Murray with, uh, from the from the university. Yeah. And uh, he asked me, and I said, "Nope, nope, got my plan already. I, I, I love what you do, but that's not that's not what I'm going to do." And uh, but then that that Friday night, the last night, and honestly, Pastor Betzer preached in that General Assembly on Missions Whoa. Night, and it's probably the great service we've ever had at the General Assembly. And uh, that week and God began to work on my heart. And that Friday night, uh, voices of Lee got up and sang great is our faithfulness. And God began to really, it was a watershed moment for me. Wow. And so I got home and I hand wrote a letter to Danny and, uh, and I said, you probably already found mm -hmm. somebody else. Uh, but if not, I feel a tug classes yeah. were starting that Monday. So that, for that classes had already begun. He must've called me as soon as he got the letter. I sent it on Monday. Wednesday, he called me. He said, I, I, I've got a spot. I want you to come on. Even though class has already started, you're late. We'll get you in. We'll get it all worked out. So he got me to Lee, and uh, and it was exactly where I was supposed to be. And I still was studying. I, I, I went in as a political science major, still had every intention of being an attorney. I said, but I got to do this for now. I got to sing. And that paid for my school. And uh, and so I did that. And, uh, and do you oh, know, man. I even got a, it was all said and done. I ended up got all my money back and even got some extra back. It, it ended up with more when it was all said and done from the school I was supposed to go to. Oh, and, that's a miracle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was absolutely amazing. Got, got, went to Lee, spent four years traveling the world with Danny. We went everywhere and sang uh, every concert, all every church, uh, and, and met so many incredible people, you know, that, and I think strategically that's why God had me there at that time. But, I, but I got to my senior year, and a, a dear friend of ours, uh, known forever, um, Loran Livingston, he pastors a church in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes, he preached in our convocation uh, that senior year. And in the order that night, I finally said, okay, Lord, I'm, I don't know where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to do, but I know you've called me and I've been running from it. And so I'll do whatever you want me to do. And so I expected, you know, then, okay, I'm giving in, the jobs are gonna line up. That's what everybody was telling me, but it didn't happen. Huh. So I'm there. I spent the summer traveling with Danny because no door had opened up. And I was a, I, I had found a church in Nashville, Tennessee, that was and it would it was a great job. But it was, you know, I just I didn't feel that gut level. But I needed I, I needed to pay bills. So I was going to go work at that church. And the night before I was going there to do the insurance paperwork and all and look for an apartment, a, a pastor from Mobile, Alabama, called me at 10 o'clock at night. And he said, I, I don't, he said, I had to find out who you were. All I could see was your face. I met you in a convention. And he said, I know you're supposed to come be my worship pastor. And I knew in that conversation, can't explain it. I called Amazing. my parents and said, I'm moving to Mobile, Alabama. I don't understand it all. And I don't know anything about this place, but I know that's where I'm going. And so that's where I, that's where I ended up. 